Welcome to Unique People Stories. Horror Stories. Four years ago. I lived in a very large farmhouse. That was converted into two apartments. The house was known as the old boy's home. It was used to house boys with behavioral issues but was closed due to allegations of molestation. Anyway. I was living with my boyfriend and three-year-old daughter at the time. My bedroom had a large fireplace that had been boarded up and painted over. I decided to push my bed up against it one day while I was rearranging things. It was like a headboard. That night. Around 1 a.m. I had heard a small voice saying, Mom. Mom. Mommy. I had sat up in bed but didn't see anything so I reached over my boyfriend trying to grab down to grab my daughter and put her in our bed. I kept feeling around and I was still hearing the voice but I couldn't feel her. My boyfriend woke up and turned the bedside lamp on asking me what the hell are you doing. I explained that Amelia was trying to get in our bed and I was reaching for her. There was nobody there. My daughter was sound asleep in her room. Then the next night came. Around 1 a.m. again my dog had started to whimper it outdoor so my boyfriend got up to take him outside. You know that feeling in a bed when someone lies down next to you? Where the bed pushes in and there is a warmth in your back. I felt that. So I assumed my boyfriend had come back to bed. I rolled over. My boyfriend wasn't in the bed and I felt the fucking bed release pressure. Whatever was laying next to me has gotten up in that second. I moved my bed the next day to the other side of the room and I never had another incident in the two years I remained in that house. I was sitting in my room at like 11.30 p.m. Heard lots of shit downstairs. Assumed it was my mum. Heard her walk up the stairs to my room. Stop. I called out to her. She didn't say anything and walked downstairs. I went down about a half hour later to find a piece of paper with the words you're lucky I'm scared too on it. And a whole bunch of shit was missing. Called mum. She still hadn't arrived home from a dinner she was at with her friends. I called the cops and locked myself in the bathroom. But I think they left when they realized I was still home. Probably the most scared I've ever been when I was hiding in the bathroom. I currently live in a haunted house. I've heard voices. Footsteps. Lights have been turned on, off. One of the ghosts has a thing for silverware I hear it clattering in the drawer all the time. And sometimes a knife or two will end up in the wrong slot in the drawer. But the strangest, scariest experience I had was the first night I spent in the house. I wasn't finished moving in. There were boxes everywhere. I didn't even have my mattress up there yet. I was betting on an old futon mattress. Watching a video on my phone. When I get the pins and needles feeling of my feet falling asleep. Except it wasn't on my feet. It was on the top of my head in the shape of a hand. I said. Good night. Turned off my light and tried to sleep. When I woke up my closet door was ajar. But other than that everything was otherwise untouched. I guess whoever my unseen roommate is. Just wanted to check out who I was on my first night. When I was around 16 my rapidly growing family finally moved from the house I had spent my entire life in. As you would expect. We spent a lot of time fondly remembering things we used to do in the house as we were packing everything up. At some point I decided to go into the downstairs closet with a flashlight and read. Something I used to do when I was younger to get some peace and quiet. Now. This is one of those deep closets that goes under the stairs. It went back around 8 feet and then had a left turn into a very low maybe 3 foot high space. This space was largely occupied by a mountain of old blankets and stuffed animals. Of course. This is the most fluffy spot to sit and read. About an hour and I shift a little to get comfortable and I hear a low. Slow. Warped. Hoarse voice say you always make me happy. I flipped my shit. Hit my head on the low ceiling. And practically broke the door down getting out. After hyperventilating and explaining to my family why there was no color left on my face I went back to see what it was. It was my stuffed little bear from when I was three or four years old that I happened to lean on just right to press his belly. When I pressed his stomach again though. Nothing. This poor bear I hadn't played with since I was a toddler used the last of its power. Used its dying breath to tell me I made it happy. 
You make me happy too little bear. When you're not making me piss myself. I saw a dead soldier's ghost in my barracks room before I deployed. It was the guy's room who died on my company's last deployment and I was the first to be issued it. He told me to be safe. He had half a head. I'm agnostic but that makes me question it. I've had two other experiences that I'm not quite convinced about. But my great-grandma used to visit me in my dreams after she died. For like 15 years. 30 hours ago I hopped on a late-night flight from New York heading to Los Angeles. After boarding I saw that I had an entire row to myself. Take off passed without incident. And soon I was stretched out for a nap across the row. I slept for a few hours. I don't know how long. But I woke up to some severe turbulence. It's possible that the lights in the cabin went out for a moment. But I was so disoriented that it's hard to say. I checked my phone to see that it was 4.03 a.m. Which I figured gave me about an hour until we landed. When I looked out my window. I was shocked to see nothing but wide open ocean. My jaw dropped. There's obviously no ocean between New York and Los Angeles. I hit the button to call the flight attendant and spent the next few minutes racking my brain for a lake that could have been possibly been big enough to explain what I was seeing. I jumped when the attendant flipped off the light. She was grinning from ear to ear. And tears were pouring down her cheeks. How can I help you sir? She asked. I froze for a moment at her reaction before deciding to just ask my question. Quote. Where are we? Why does it look like we're flying over an ocean? She wiped her cheeks to clear the tears. Still grinning wildly. Quote. Sir. We'll be landing in about an hour. I. Uh. Okay. Thank you. I said. After she left I checked the clock on my phone again. 4.03 AM blinked back at me. It hadn't changed. I had to have been waiting with my call light on for at least five minutes. How was it possible that it hadn't changed at all? I opened up my laptop and saw it too displayed 4.03 a.m. I pulled out my phone, started a stopwatch in the app, and spent the next two hours looking back and forth between the clocks, waiting for them to change. They never did. I tapped the shoulder of an older woman sitting in the row ahead of me. She looked back, an annoyed expression across her face. Quote, yes. She asked, do you know how long until we land? I asked. She narrowed her eyes. Quote. That flight attendant said it would be about another hour. I shook my head in confusion. Quote. That flight attendant. We talked almost two hours ago. We should have landed already. She stared at me as if I was crazy. I was going to continue trying to convince her. But I felt a hand on my shoulder. I spun to see a male flight attendant grinning down at me. Tears pinging off his cheeks onto my shoulder. Sir. I'm going to ask you to calm down. Or I'll be calling the captain. I told him that wouldn't be necessary and sat back. He removed his hand and stepped away. The flight attendants continued to stop by every few hours offering meals. My stopwatch continued to tick up and is now telling me that I've been on this plane for more than 30 hours. I've explored all of coach and tried talking to some of the other passengers but they've all told me that they're expecting to land in an hour or so. Around three hours ago I tried getting into first class. I made it past the curtain but was escorted back by two grinning flight attendants. Their grip on my arms were like iron. Sir. The seatbelt sign is on. One said. Quote. Please remain in your seat with your buckle fastened. We'll be landing in about an hour. I'd just about given up hope when a woman came down the aisle dressed in a business suit. She didn't look at me or slow down. But she dropped a piece of paper onto my tray as she made her way to the bathrooms at the back of the plane. I shot a look around before unrolling it. It said. Are you stuck too? I pulled out a pen and wrote, yes. It's been 30 hours. I folded the scrap of paper up and set it on the tray closest to the aisle. She left the bathroom and picked it up as she passed. It's been 20 minutes since then. I don't know why. But I don't think the flight attendants would like it if they knew we were talking. It doesn't matter. I have to do something. I'll update you all with whatever happens next. I live in a small cul-de-sac in the middle of nowhere. The next nearest neighborhood is over four miles away. 
One night a few years ago we got over a foot and a half of snow overnight. So far from main roads and on the weekend I knew our roads will be remain unplowed for quite some time. I went to my out back deck door to look at the snow draped trees and the still heavily falling flurries and take some pictures when I noticed footprints leading to my door then turning around and leaving. I looked and saw that they came from my neighbor's side and thought that one of their more delinquent kids played a joke as my sledding tube on the railing was popped. I decided I'd wait till later as it was early to call their parents. I went on Facebook and after scrolling for a bit I noticed one of my neighbors closer to the entrance posted did someone knock for me or something at my back door? I immediately called her. Talked. And told her I have an idea. I called the first house on the entrance and told him what was going on. He went and checked and sure enough. They were there too. Everyone started calling everyone else. I called the family at the far end and they told me there was none there. Then I got a call from my next door neighbor. She called the woman that lives next to the end house. She said that there were footprints that led to her door. But none led away. We already called the police by this point but now we called them back and said that it's an emergency now. They told us the roads are still all unplowed and they can't send a plow truck to clear the way as they are a privately owned company. The woman was losing it so one of the husband's huge bear of a man across the road from her texted her to say he was coming over to invite her over. He came and she left. We put up one guy's live feed motion recording hunting cameras facing all exits. Nothing came out. Around 7 p.m. a plow truck came as well as three cop cars. The couple she was staying with and her went to her house and stood in the doorway as the police searched. They found nothing. She begged them to keep looking so they did. Two of the cops went into the basement again. This time only one came up. He took her to the side room and we could hear hysterical crying by now we are all out there. Me and a few of the other guys started towards the door when several police confronted us. They told us they found someone hiding under a cover opening in the stairwell that she didn't even know existed. A few minutes later a scruffy man screaming and kicking came out in cuffs and was led away. In his little camp out they found blankets she just cleaned and put away. In the room next to hers. She stayed in other people's houses for a long time before going back. Even then she wouldn't stay alone. She sold the house the next summer. He turned out to be a thrill-seeking junkie who was on probation for assault against a family member. The cops told us that they feel like he didn't want to stay at his apartment after a fight with his roommate and drove off in his roommate's car from the county over and got stuck in our unplowed roads. And that is why you always make sure you lock your doors. Thank you for listening. What was the scariest thing that has happened to you?